Legends of Zelda Majora Mask. One of the most memorable Legend of Zelda for many, and my favorite by far. Now, one thing that really truly hit me was I was younger and playing this game was that moment inside the sewers where you were equipping the zombie mask in order to interact with the zombies for once instead of having them being super annoying and try to kill you. And they were requesting you to give them a couple of items that you had to show and guess based on some off descriptions that they were giving you. Like for instance for water they will ask you to breathe them something which has H2O which is the scientific formula for water etc 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 etc. And I thought it would be an interesting gimmick to show you how to implement inside your RPG Major games. So, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so we have a little dungeon over here, a couple of doors, and in front of each one of those doors, we're gonna have a monster, which is gonna request us to give him a specific item based on some off description, and the player is gonna have to guess which item it is. So how can we implement it? Let's go with showing some text from the monster, and for this first monster, which we're gonna have, is, um, let's say, give me something that increases, well, people's strength all right so that's gonna be the first item that they want and we're gonna have a second monster which in his case what he's gonna want is show me something that heals people oh boy that one's gonna be interesting so let's do this the first thing you're gonna do is there's some new there's a mechanic inside RPG Maker MZ now, which is called the Select Item. Now the Select Item is going to allow you to pick a regular key item or an item item from your inventory and stock the ID of that item inside a variable. So, select that item. It's now going to stock the regular item that we're going to try to present to the monster. Now. In our chase, give me something that increases people's strength. If I go inside the database for the items, on the ID 25, we have something called the attack increase, which increases the attack by three points. This is exactly what the monster here is requesting. And so, if the variable select item equals 25, we're gonna have uh, the monster disappear and tell us that we can go on. So it's that simple. Let me. We of course also gonna need to change the item and reduce the item twenty five. Decrease it by one because he wants you to give it to him. All right. So let me just fast forward this part for you. All right, so if the selected item is 25, which is the item the monster wants to see, is going to slowly disappear by reducing his opacity. And then we're going to activate the self switch A, which is going to make the monster disappear. We're also going to open the door behind them using the damn self switch's set value that I previously shown you inside um, the one line of code you need to know video tutorial that I hope you saw sitting all because it is super useful. And if the condition is not 25, then it's just going to be passed. Or it's just not going to let you pass. Nope, that's not it. In another case, you could have the player, you could attack the players, and turns out zombies are super strong and super annoying to fight inside your game. So players might want to try to just write the item they want so that they don't have to deal with the fight. And if they just write, then they also get the experience from the monster as well. Or the monster don't give experience at all if you want to be super annoying. Which is fine in this case. That's a good kind of gimmick slash trap that you can implement inside your dungeons. All right. Now, moving on for the second zombie. Now, it gets a little bit interesting because show me something that heals people 
is great in a way but there's multiple items that can recover health inside rpg maker mz by if we look at the base um items inside the database there's the potion the super potion and the full potion so how do we implement this well a little bit in the same way that we did previously so that means that we're going to select a regular item from inventory going to store it inside the variable selected item now if the condition of the selected item variable is equals to seven eight or nine so seven eight whoops that's not the right one selected item seven eight or nine then we're going to do the exact same thing that the previous one just did. So I can go back here and copy paste all of this. Except that we're not going to remove any item in this case because he only wants to see the item. He doesn't want you to give it to him. So we're not going to reduce anything. But uh, we're also going to use a damn self switch. We're going to modify it for the event ID 2, which is going to open the door behind this guy. And I'm gonna need a new page with the self switch A where in which he is empty. All right, but here's the deal now. Um, the player could decide that it shows the item uh, potion, super potion, or the full potion. Now, are we really going to copy paste this um, all the time, like for all three of them? I feel like it's super bad for so many ways. First, it takes a lot of space. Now, and also, if you have like what 10 possibility of items, you're gonna copy paste it 10 times. What happens if you made a mistake inside your coding and once you happen to test it then you have to redo it all over for 10 like 10 times inside your coding as well that's just not a good idea to do so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start using labels yes so a label is basically a place where the code can start to using the label and jump to label functions from rpg maker mc so in this case what i did here is that i created a label called good answer which I input at the beginning of the condition nine. And if I, the condition is also seven or eight, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the code jump to the label, good answer. So if the selected item ID is seven or eight, then once we enter inside the conditional branch over here, we're going to jump right over there and we're going to read this code no matter what. And it's that simple. Now, if you wanted instead of showing give me the item then inside each one of the branch then the item could be like change the item decrease potion for this one and then jump to the label or decrease super potion over here decrease the label and before the label over there you will input decrease the full potion because if you put it after then they will get rid of a potion then a full potion and that's not what you want so before the label then if they, so if they show a potion to the player to the monster then we go inside the block equals seven remove the potion jump to label a good answer right over here and we read out that code so it only needs to be ripened once inside your event fantastic now with the labels the problem here is that we're not there's no way really to guarantee that the player is going to select the correct item from the dead code so what happens if he shows the wrong item now, we're not really in a possibility to create that else branch here because if it's not 7, then it could be 8 or 9. So there's a problem here. How do we solve that? It's very, very simple. Inside the condition 9, which is where the coding is all happening, at the very end of this position, of this condition, you're going to click on exit event processing. So that means that it's going to end the running event of the monster. So it's not going to keep going with the code which is below. Now, at the very end, outside all of the conditions, this is where your else will be happening in this case. So we're going to have the monsters telling us like, nope, that's not it. Or attack the players or whatever it is that you want it to do, really. All right, now I feel like the only thing left to do is to create a little chest over here, which is going to give you a couple of those items and test it out to see how it goes. All right, so I created a chest with a couple of items and let's try it out, see how it goes. So I'm going to open the chest, collect a couple of items and I'm going to talk to this guy. So give me something that increases people's strength. So let's try with the magic water. Nope, that's not it. Give me something that increases people's strength. Now it's attack increase. Thank you, it then go on. So it slowly disappears, shakes the train and then we open the door which is going to teleport somewhere and I just realized I forgot to implement that part 
So we're just gonna skip it with control and cheat a little. Now we go inside for the second monster and is going to give me something that ails people. Now let's try with magic water. Nope, that's not it. Now if I go with the potion instead, now 10 feet we can go on and it stops right there. So as you can see, we've exited the event processing for this event. So the last code we never went through that was telling us that it wasn't hit. And the doors open and we can move on inside the dungeon. Okay, so that's already it for today's video. Make sure to like, subscribe for more content. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below inside the comment section. And as always, I'll see you later for a new video. Bye! Goodbye!